So I'm happy to report that I was wrong about cheat skill in another world. I went into this with as much of an open mind as I could give it, but honestly, to me, it just felt like it was going to be a pretty average stereotypical isekai adventure. But there's two elements about this first episode that made me come out saying, okay, it's not trash, it's not complete garbage, and actually has me pretty excited for the future of this one. The biggest and most important element was actually the main character. Now, I've seen plenty of isekais where you have the fat loser main character who, I mean, yes, had a bad life, bullied, beaten, thrown away by their parents, but ultimately, you just don't feel like you're connecting to that character. They're generally written in a way of wish fulfillment of a horrible life kind of magically getting everything better. And usually, they just get killed right away and they become the hot anime hunk that you see before you. And instead, what this show did was for like over half of the episode, they got us to understand this dude. Yeah, he has like the stereotypical bad life, but man, he really just felt like a normal guy who got dealt a horrible hand in life. And once his grandfather was no longer around, as much as it should have got better as he inherited the home and his money, it just continued to get worse. And by going to this new world, it doesn't feel like, oh, it's your stereotypical, he got hit by Chuck Coon, and therefore now he's this hot anime character who will have a harem. He actually kind of developed over the course of this episode. And the biggest interesting hook about the East Kai world here is that rather than getting killed and transported, he can go to and from the different worlds. So in his bathroom, there was a secret closet, there's a door, you go through that door, you're in the East Kai world. You go out the door, you're back into your own world. And the experience and the money or the items that you collect in that world come over to his normal one. So basically, the reason he ends up in this new hot anime bod is because ultimately he was training and killing some monsters, farming and doing all these different things that in return, in this metamorphous weird animation that looked very painful, he turned into who he is now, and I love the fact that he actually now has a fun job rather than delivering papers and getting beat up by thugs. Everything about the episode on paper is pretty much what you expect, but there is enough detours that does make this one stand out. I truly thought this dude was going to be insufferable. I was like, okay, yes, severely overweight, he's severely ugly, and yes, he is getting beaten up and bruised. Yes, it's a shitty life, but ultimately, we've seen that before, and usually these characters just get handed everything almost immediately, and you don't really get to understand who they were before, just who they are now, and usually that just means they're a pretty boy with a harem. But this dude, I honestly came out to enjoy. Now, I do have a full live reaction to episode 1, available on my Patreon, so if you do want to see my full uncut thoughts as I watch this episode, you can head on over there and consider supporting. I mean, I literally started the reaction saying, like, if you're seeing this, it means I like it, because otherwise I was just going to delete the reaction, because I really didn't expect to enjoy this one, but I actually did. I'm not saying it's the best episode that I've seen all season or the past few seasons, but what I am here to say is that every time I thought I knew the predictable outcome, I mean, literally the first moment of this episode is traffic lights. You see the walk signal for the pedestrians, and then it goes away. I was like, oh, they're going to kill this dude, right? They're going to, he's going to get hit by a truck. We're going to have the stereotypical fat bastard who tries to save someone, gets hit by a car, and then just immediately they avoid it. We got to know him as a person, and we got to see what type of hell he's been living. I mean, you feel bad for the guy. Not only was he beaten and bruised at school, his parents literally did the same thing. You can't even put his own laundry with theirs because they're beautiful and he's not. And the fact that when the grandfather died, the only reason seemingly the parents came to talk about the grandfather's death is because they were upset that the grandfather left him his home and money, and once they couldn't get anything, they cut him off, and obviously he now had to fend for himself. You feel bad because he's a big boy, and the fact that he was eating a single cup ramen... I mean, it's very clear he was paying those thugs who were shaking him down, and obviously he didn't have a lot of money to spend on himself. One of the best character pieces of this episode is actually when he comes back to the world for the first time after being transported, seemingly. So prior to that, he punches the mirror. He hates how he looks, he hates himself, and obviously there's no mirror. And what ends up happening is he ends up going, he transforms, and he's like unsure of what happened to his body. He's like, oh shit, I'm all ripped, I'm hot now. But he assumes his face, something that he's hated this entire time, is still the ugly pig face that he's been called all his life. So he doesn't look at a mirror again, because obviously he breaks it, but he doesn't go out of the way because he literally says, I don't want to see it anyway. So when he goes to school, he's obviously in for a, quite a surprise. And I like how they avoided another moment where I was like, oh, 
he's going to pretend to be a new person because obviously he now has a completely new identity that he can rock with. And he's like, no, I'm him. He's nervous. When he gets his first kill in the fantasy world, he he's shaking because he, he killed something, something he clearly never would do before. I like that this show, it hits all the familiar beats that people who love Isekai or maybe even people who normally dislike these beats in Isekai, but it hits it in a way that most likely both sides will have something where they say, huh, I'm willing to see where this one goes. Even if you don't like the first episode as much as me, there's probably at least one moment here that makes you say, I'm interested to see where they take it. And I think the biggest one will probably be the cash out skill. Not only is it cool that seemingly he can have a good meal. I mean, he was eating cup ramen, now he's eating this delicious looking smorgasbord. The fact that the items and the things that he gets, he ends up bringing back some yen that he can use in his original world. But seemingly, because it gets rubbed in his face after the credits by his horrible brother and sister who look like the most generic pretty boy, pretty girl, daddy gives you everything and honestly you're one step away from being the first dead in a slasher flick. They're basically saying we're smarter than you and you can't run for shit because he doesn't have any athletic skills. No. Very clearly, the things that are going to build him into a character in the fantasy world are also going to build him in the real world. And it's going to be very fun to see the people who have ruined his life get a very, very good wake-up call that they are pieces of garbage and ultimately he's going to have a lot better of a life. The show starts off with him saving a girl from these thugs who were probably up to very, very bad things. And it's seemingly that same girl pops up at the very end. I'm interested to see how a character like him, who actually doesn't feel like your stereotypical, I'm just here to get a harem, or no, he's just, he wants to have a life, he wants to be accepted in a world, and it's going to be really cool to see how both worlds will make him evolve as a character, and the different relationships, because as it stands, the only real reason I could see why you'd want to go back to your original world is that there's actually people here that you can talk with more, and obviously there's technology and stuff, obviously if you're more accustomed to technology, maybe going to a fantasy world without it probably isn't up to what your normal standards are. But given how beaten and bruised he was, I mean, I probably would have just stuck with that fantasy world if I'm being honest, but power to the boy. The big thing is this show looks beautiful, the art style is crisp and detailed, and I love how when the ogre fight pops off, it just transitions so seamlessly from the generic normal animation to this like, holy, what is this dude doing? There is a consistency that is honestly unrivaled right now. It just doesn't dip. And honestly, for an easy guy that I thought was going to be super generic, the show visually popped off. And honestly, narratively and character wise, it is actually a lot more surprising than I was willing to give credit to initially. But after making my What Will I Watch video, I had a few people say, no, honestly, give this one a shot. I know you're skeptical, but it's actually pretty good. I'm happy to say for me anyway, I absolutely agree. But let me know what you thought if you checked out the first episode of Cheat Skill in Another World. You're going to keep on watching it like myself? Do let me know down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here. Be sure to ring that bell as well so you can get notified when I upload on the channel. And of course, as I mentioned, we do have that full live reaction available on my Patreon if you're interested. So, till next time everyone, please take care and have a good one.